Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Dennis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. We have awesome news coming from United States, they will send us a drone killing vampires, but sadly next year. This is the portable anti-drone equipment that could be installed on a car or any kind of other vehicle that should solve the problem with Shahi drones and not only. Because for now 40% of Ukrainian power lines and power stations are demolished or severely damaged by those rockets and drones that Russia uses here in Ukraine against civilian infrastructure. Today I read about the good news that the problem was fixed for the most part of the Kiev area. I think I'm not just in a proper place because here we have a blackout. And that is why you'll probably see this video published very late. Some of the insights coming from the New York Times, they say that some of the Russian leaders discussed the nuclear weapons to be used in Ukraine. That conversation alarmed the Biden's administration since they are very concerned that Moscow may use nuclear weapons. I think they will not use because Russia will face severe circumstances for their country. That Russian military nuclear discussion, let's say, was held without Putin's presence and we don't know so far the nature of the topic they discussed. Probably they discussed that they should not use nuclear weapons or maybe they are preparing for it. Anyways, till now, Pentagon doesn't see any signs of the preparations for the Russia to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. And it seems like there are some American spies within the military leaders group uh, that they discuss since we know that details were passed to Biden's administration. And right after that information went public in New York Times, Russia published the article where they call all the nuclear countries to think how they should control their weaponry and how to avoid the risk of the nuclear escalation. It seems like they wanted to say that negotiation was not to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine, but to control it in general. Antonovsky Bridge was under attack today. Again, Russians uh, built some of the ferries and Ukraine again used the HIMARS rocket artillery system to eliminate the supply for the Russian group. Today, Russians officially say that they ended the evacuation of civilians from the Kherson and that region but in general, what they do, they forcefully take our Ukrainian people and send them to Russia. Clearly, it is a genocide factor, one of those. This is the satellite image of the Belarusian Machulishi airfield where Russia based their MiG-31 very high-speed fighter jets and they may carry Kinjal hypersonic rockets and here on the right you can see you can spot the containers where those rockets may be stored so it's the great uh, threat for Ukraine because the range of those rockets is more than 2000 kilometers and they fly very fast and more satellite images taken from the Sebastopol harbor and here you may see the Admiral Makarov frigate that was towed it is very unusual was towed uh, to this port and now it's on a long haul storage. We don't see any kind of damages because the image quality is not so great and the ship is far away but we think that it was damaged by the drone boat. From the information that I see, Grain Corridor is working, my friends, and Russia already announced that they rejoined the deal. So they just watched how United Nations, Ukraine and Turkey agreed on continue uh, to send the ships from Ukrainian ports and Russia simply cannot do anything with that. And they said like, all right, we're going to rejoin the deal. <laughs> Very funny actually to see that stuff coming from Russia. So first they say, no, we're going to stop it. Now they see that they cannot do anything with it. John Kirby said that United States got the information that North Korea sends the artillery shells to the Russian Federation. Even though North Korea declines the accusations, but we see the same deal with Iran. They also decline any kind of accusations that they send the drones to the Russian side, but we see them flying in Ukraine. Turkish media say that Erdogan proposed to Russian leader to leave the Ukrainian territory and sign the agreement for the peace deal. That would be the great move even for the Russia itself but Putin, I think, will never do it until
until he stays in power. It seems like we'll have one more video hosting. It's awesome because we need to have some sort of the alternative for YouTube, but it shouldn't be payable, I think. So Elon Musk's Twitter is working on a paid video feature with high risk. I think if you post some sort of the video, you may ask for some of the funds from your subscribers, but I have the similar platform, it's Patreon. So the Twitter is just a wider audience, I think, um, but I'm not sure whether society would like that stuff because on youtube mostly you can watch videos for free so we have a very bad internet that's why the video quality is not very great so iran put this red flag it means that they are on some sort of the emergency conditions on some of the masks there they filmed uh, the videos in my yesterday's video i told you about their intentions to attack saudi arabia yet we haven't seen that scenario but saudi arabia says that maybe in 24 hours Iran would dare to attack their country. President Zelensky with his everyday speech to Ukrainian people, he said that Russia asked for the security guarantees from the United States and not only before starting this war. And now Russia asks the security guarantees for Ukraine not to attack Sevastopol harbor again. So Zelensky was just laughing about it and say that it's the clear sign that Russian army is much weaker than the world thought before. This is the image taken from the flight radar 24. The Boeing KC-135R Strata tanker was flying near to the Cyprus. Actually, it's Boeing 707 that is used to refuel uh, the airplanes, I think. I know that there are lots of those old school Boeing 707s in United States Army. They are used as tankers, as surveillance airplanes. At uh, this time, pilot flown a very specific pattern. I don't remember the name of it. You may put in a comment section just below. As you see, they fly very close to Syria. There are some of the Russian bases uh, near to Damascus. I don't know why do we have the black stripe here. It's too early. He's still alive and he's with his speech saying that Ukraine dared to attack Sevastopol and we need guarantees for Ukrainian from Ukrainian side uh, to continue the grain deal but they already officially say that they will continue to pursue to participate the grain deal uh, from Ukrainian ports. Right guys, we have some of the updates on this military map. Russia gathered their resources and they tried to attack Ukraine again, uh, not from the north, not from the Sumy, not from the Zaporizhia region, but as usual, they moved from the Donetsk and also they moved a little bit here on their attack towards Mokivka. They want to take uh, this village because it's kind of important crossroad over here. Still, they didn't cross uh, the river over here and it's under Ukrainian control I just want to show you the timeline so it was yesterday Makivka was totally under Ukrainian control and Russians moved quite quite fast towards this uh, village and for Ukrainian army it's very critical to put the defense lines closer to this line because we were on our counter attack now it's stopped and we need to put new reinforcements because Russia has many more resources nowadays in this region and they still have the artillery superiority they have aviation in this region so it's kind of hard for us to continue our counterattack. so for now i think we're gonna stay here near to the border of the lugansk region here this is the crossroad between donetsk kharkiv and lugansk region and i think we should move a little bit to the north to free all of the Kharkiv uh, region and later on moved to the Star uh, sorry, Svatove and Krimina. Let's move to the south. Just yesterday, I told you that Russians tried to attack Pavlovka. If we go on a timeline, you see that they were very close to that village and the day before they were out of it. So they moved to that village. They got um, the fire from the Ukrainian army and moved back. And here all across the front lines in Donetsk region and Horlivka and near to the Bakhmut, Russia continuously tries to get some of the villages and maybe to encircle Bakhmut from the south direction. So here they have, uh, they moved a little bit to Opetne, uh, but not very significantly. 
And as I told you before, they moved out all of the civilians from this region near to Hirson on the north side of it. And they also announced the evacuation of civilians uh, from the south part of the Dnieper River, uh, the 15 kilometer zone. They canceled all of the ferries across the, the Dnieper River for civilians. Uh, and they now move more military forces to Kherson city itself. I wonder what provocations we may expect from the Russian side. But now uh, Ukrainian forces on the other hand are free to use any kind of weaponry to destroy a Russian army in Kherson because there are almost no civilians. My friends, I'm gonna keep you updated on situation here in Ukraine. If you want to support this channel, just press the like button. If you want to support me financially, there are some of the links in the video description below you may support me on paypal patreon or donatella whichever is more convenient for you my friends i wish you a peaceful sky wherever you are have a great time